Shalom, the peace of Christ be with you. This is the homily for the third Sunday of Advent year A, going to focus mostly on the gospel reading, Matthew chapter 11, and uh, on the theme, the identity crisis. First of all, the term identity crisis was actually uh, coined and worked by the famous developmental psychologist Eric Erikson. Uh, he believed that the formation of identity was one of the most important parts of a person's life. Um, what is an identity crisis? I have two questions for you. Uh, pause for a while and then answer the question. Are you unsure of your role in life? Number two, do you feel like you don't know the real you? If you answer as to the previous questions, you may be experiencing an identity crisis. People tend to experience them at various points throughout life. Throughout life, it is not just for teenagers. Particularly at points of great changes, including losing or starting a job, beginning a new relationship, ending a marriage or partnership, having a child, losing a loved one, moving, experiencing a traumatic event, learning about a health condition. So identity crises are also common among people with mental illnesses, including depression, codependence, bipolar disorder, or borderline personality disorder. So identity crises everyone experiences in their life, uh, mostly, most of them. Why am I talking about identity crises today? On the third Sunday of Advent, it's supposed to be a joyful Sunday, Gaudate Sunday. Let me take you to the Gospel reading. The opinion of John the Baptist on Jesus. Last Sunday, if you had remembered uh, the Gospel reading, Matthew chapter 3, verse 11 to 12, John the Baptist actually praises Jesus. He says, I'm baptizing you with water for repentance, but the one who is coming after me is mightier than I. I'm not worthy to carry sandals. This is the last Sunday Gospel reading, Matthew chapter 3. Look at this Sunday, chapter 11, verse 2 to 3. Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? So, what happened? It, it appears as if John the Baptist's opinion about Jesus has changed. So, what's the reason behind it? You know, we don't call John the Baptist doubting John the Baptist because he questioned. We always call Thomas doubting Thomas. I don't know why we don't do that. Probably because uh, the truth is different. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verse 16 to 17, the uh, words of Angel Gabriel to Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, where he talks about the role of John the Baptist, that he will turn many people uh, of Israel to God, and then he will carry the spirit and power of Elijah. And third one, he will prepare people fit for the Lord. He, pre he will prepare people fit for the Lord, that is Jesus. So exactly that is what John the Baptist did. John 1 verse 35, we read the next day John was, John was there again with two of his disciples, that is Andrew and James, uh, John the Evangelist. Both of them became apostles of Jesus, not just them, their brothers also, uh, Peter and uh, James, they followed Jesus, they became apostles of Jesus. So in that case, um, he actually fulfilled his role, John the Baptist. So why did he ask this question? Do we have to look for another then? So what did Jesus think about the question of John the Baptist? You know, Jesus doesn't question John the Baptist afterwards, after the questions of the disciples. He actually praises John the Baptist. Jesus' praise of John the Baptist allows us to understand that in fact the Baptist knew very well the meaning of the message. And that he died believing in the one whom he had announced. So John the Baptist did not die not believing that Jesus is the Messiah. No, he did die. He knew that Jesus was the Messiah. But if you carefully analyze the response of Jesus, it is something else. You know, Jesus as if the response, if you analyze everything together, you will, you will come to the conclusion of telling that Jesus is as if telling the disciples, if you really wanted to know who am I, or who I am, then you have to know who you are at first. Because, let's say, uh, the identity of Jesus. John the Baptist asks this question, Are you the one who is to come or should we look for another? Look at the response of Jesus. Jesus responds, The blind 
regain their sight. The lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. The response of Jesus is not his own words. Actually, he's quoting scripture. You know, previously we also see during the temptation of Jesus, Jesus uh, answers the Satan's question with the scripture passage. And now Jesus does the same here with quoting Isaiah, not just one passage, you know, he, he, because these words of Jesus that is presented in the gospel reading are present in everywhere in several passages. For example, Isaiah chapter 29, uh, verse chapter 35, uh, today's first reading, and chapter 61. So, for example, chapter 29 of Isaiah 18 to 19, The lowly shall again find joy in the Lord. The poorest rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. And then in Matthew chapter 12, that is uh, after, the next chapter after today's gospel reading, Jesus says, For the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. So if you carefully see the response of Jesus quoting Isaiah, he says the blind regain their sight. Who will do this? Not the Messiah, but God himself. So if you read further the question in today's gospel reading, when John heard in prison of the works of the Messiah, so John's belief about Jesus is that he's, he's Messiah. And Jesus' response here, I'm not just Messiah. I am God. I am the Son of God. That is the response of Jesus here. He's, he's saying the identity of Jesus that is not just a Messiah, not just a prophet. He is God himself. My dear brothers and sisters, you know, Islam recognizes Jesus as a prophet. But Jesus claims here, not just a prophet, he's God himself. The 1.3 billion people believe erroneously that Jesus is just a prophet. He's not just a prophet. He's a son of God. He's God himself. That is what he claims here in this passage. So now Jesus questions back. You know, he, he, he once again responses with the scripture. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 10, he says, This is the one about whom it is written, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. He's quoting Malachi chapter 1, verse, a, verse a 1. So there he says, John the Baptist, you are asking me whether I am the Messiah. But I am telling you, I am not just a Messiah or a prophet. I am God himself. But do you know, first of all, who you are? And then he quotes Malachi. My dear brothers and sisters, in Malachi we read, Now I am sending my messenger. Who is the I? It's God is sending the messenger. He will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will come suddenly to his temple. The words of Malachi, Jesus quotes, and then he says, John the Baptist, first of all, you know who you are. You are preparing the way, not just for Messiah or prophet. You are preparing the way for God himself. So Jesus teaches the disciples and reveals the identity of John the Baptist. My dear brothers and sisters, what is the solution to identity crisis? In the beginning, I told you so many identity crises people face. So according to the research, there is a good reason to overcome an identity crisis. Researchers have found that those who have made a strong commitment to an identity tend to be happier and healthier than those who have not. A strong commitment to an identity. Today, unfortunately, because of the philosophy of reductionism, people have reduced their whole identity to their sexual orientation. But your identity is much bigger. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, God created mankind in his image. And furthermore, in Genesis chapter 5 verse 1 to 3, he explains this is the record of the descendants of Adam. When God created human beings, he made them in the likeness of God. He created the male and female. When they were created, he blessed them and named them humankind. Adam was 130 years old when he begot a son in his likeness after his image and he named him Seth. What is the image and likeness of God? That is our identity. That is a human identity. What is the image and likeness of God? 
it is that we are children of God. That is why in verse 3 we read, Adam begot a son in his likeness after his image, his sonship, Seth, his fathership, the fatherhood. That is our identity, that we are children of God. That is the image and likeness of God, my dear brothers and sisters. Vatican II document Gaudi Metspes states in Article 36, For without the Creator, the creature would disappear. When God is forgotten, the creature itself grows unintelligible. When we reduce our identity to our sexual orientation, what we actually deny is the Creator. My dear brothers and sisters, when we deny the Creator, the creature would disappear. When God is forgotten, the creature itself grows unintelligible. That is what happens exactly now. You know, Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI said, Every person has a fundamental identity, the creature of God, and by grace, his child, an heir to eternal life. My dear brothers and sisters, our identity is that we are children of God, not slaves of God like Islam claims. No, we are children of God. God is our Father. You believe that we can change our way of life. Every problem, every crisis begins with that, denying the Creator. And as Gaudi Metzpah says very clearly, for without the Creator, the creature would disappear. When God is forgotten, the creature itself grows unintelligible. Amen.